Hi, um, good afternoon. My name is Rachel Lamy. I'm a product manager at Crossref and I'm based in our Oxford office. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk um, about some other services for, from Crossref. We keep talking about the, the metadata and although that's obviously used by um, publishers themselves and um, by the um, by authors, etc., looking up references, um, they can al it can also be used by by different third parties. So, a lot of discovery services they rely on bibliographic metadata from from publishers, and an increasing number of services are using they're using citation analysis. So, looking at how many times different different articles or different journals cite cite other articles books, conferences, etc. And publishers, the issue is that publishers can have display this information or have this information in lots of different ways. And it can be also difficult to, to find metadata for things like book chapters. And using the, the metadata in this way, to, the, more, the more ways in which the Crossref metadata is distributed means the more people can find and access your publications. Um, so that's, that's really an advantage of making it available to, um, to other people. Um, whenever, um, as you know, whenever um, publishers deposit DOIs with Crossref, they give us the metadata in a standard XML format. So whenever we say, um, affiliation, it will come in um, in the same format. So it means that um, it means that other people can take and use that information in a consistent way, and it's available for a lot of publishers' references, which is um, which is also very valuable for those services who want to do citation analysis. We've got lots of book chapters, um, as Jenny showed. Um, book deposits are increasing very, um, as as much as um, components. And we've got something called Crossref Metadata Services, or CMS, and that provides the um, it provides parties with the Crossref metadata in a standard format. It can be accessed by different ways, and then it gives the, the person using it a license to reuse that information within their own products or services. They said part of um, Part of using that means that they can they can locally host the Crossref metadata, so they can download um, as as much of the the metadata as they want, and then um, sort of query that or use it locally, so that whenever they want to look up some information within the metadata, they don't have to come to Crossref each time. Um, I mentioned they can use it for analysis, and I've all I've sort of run through a bit. Um, which, who might use it, um, because there are um, people from libraries here. Um, some li libraries use it in order to um, to help link resolvers. You can use it in um, in search engines. So Crossref metadata search uses the the Crossref metadata via our our API to be able to display the information whenever someone types in a title or some author information. Um, organizations providing citation metrics, um, so people like um, people like Altmetric can use the the Crossref data, and also the um, Thomson use it within their um, within their citation index, um, so they come and get that information from us in a standard form. Um, if you are a member of a publisher member, you can decide. To, for, for, um, for any reason, not to include your, um, not to have your data um, or your references included in there by, by the, if you want to. Um, reasons for that, um, and we were talking about this at lunch. Reasons for that might be if you have um, financial reasons, but if you have services that are built. Um, services that are built on top of your references, etc., then you might not want to, to make those readily available to, to anyone who signs up with Crossref as an affiliate. Um, publishers can opt out of providing all of their metadata 
or they could just opt out of providing um, references, which, which some do. Um, there's an enhanced version of CMS, and if, if it was very important for your service that you had the reference um, information as well, then you could, you, could join, you could join to get it. Um, for publishers, um, if you're keen to make your references available, um, this is just the, the page on, um, on the website. And what we do is whenever, uh, whenever a company comes to us, so say someone like um, Deep Dive, for example, or um, Kudos, who, do, um, who try to sort of help, um, help authors make their work more discoverable, what we'll do is we'll email around um, publisher members and say, hi, um, this, this service is interested in, um, has signed up as a, as a CMS member. Are you happy for them to have your, um, are you happy for them to have your, your metadata? And publishers, again, for business reasons, financial reasons, competitive reasons, could say no. Um, by default, people, people are opted in. And I think in terms of, um, making your making your references making your information freely available so that your publications can be more widely discovered i think op i my, my personal um preferences for publishers to, to opt in um, so I, i've listed some of these already um, but you can see um you can see that we've got um, lots of different services who are already um, signing up to use the, um, use the information. As I said, Deep Dive, um, Altmetric. Some of these people you'll have heard of, some of whom are news to me, but they, they use the, the services, sort of um, the information kind of behind the scenes to, to help build their products on. So, that's a really quick, um, it's a really quick run through, but we do get people coming to us and saying, hi, I'd be interested to use your metadata. We want to build services on top of that, um, and we want to integrate it into, say, our bibliographic management systems um, to, help look, um, to help authors look up references, to help do citation analysis. So um, do, if you're talking to people who are interested, if you're interested yourselves, then send them to us and we'll be, we'll be happy to help. Um, I'll just talk about I'll talk about Crossref text and um, data mining services um, for a few minutes, and then I'll take questions um, on both of those um, on CMS and Crossref TDM. Um, whenever Pippa sent round the presentations, I really like the ducks um, who are doing obviously some some type of discovery, but. I'm going to start by a really basic overview of, um, of text and data mining. Um, it's something that's getting um, a lot more headlines, and people are starting to talk about more um, within, um, within scholarly communications and within the industry. Um, I started to talk about um, text and data mining and our text and data mining service around just over, just over one year ago, because that's when we were going to, to, to launch it. And I still find that there's quite a lot of confusion um, in the industry of people who aren't familiar with it or don't know why, why people want to, might want to do this. So this slide sums it up. Um, this slide sums it up very well. But basically, there is so much, you know, there are so many publications out there. Um, you saw in one of the earlier slides, we've got, I think, something like nearly 40,000 journal titles registered with Crossref. Um, there's so much being research being published and being produced. No academic, no one person sitting down could ever read everything within their field, within their field of study, unless it was very, very niche. Um, so what, instead of a, instead of a human taking, reading, and trying to find links between publications, this is, this is a computer doing exactly the same things. So what, um, text and data miners would have computer programs that they would run across the, the corpus of content that they're interested in and try to find links within that content that someone reading all of the information would never be able to do. Um, 
the example in the slide, it talks about um, looking at um, mortality in Canadian hospitals, find that you are more likely to die at weekends than during the week. It's a bit, maybe, maybe slightly morbid, but um, it means that you can take vast, vast data sets or vast amounts of, um, of information, run a computer program on that, and then have results come back to you that you can then analyze in more detail. Obviously, there are reasons behind why those results might come out, staffing levels, um, staffing levels, um, the, the volume of, um, like the volume of, like, accident and emergency pa pa patients that come in, etc. But what the, what people say that text and data mining is set up to do is to put forward these kind of information or links that researchers, the academics, can then build research and do more studies on top of. And that's why it um, seemed to be very important in, say, genomics and in medicine to try to potentially find links between diseases and cures that, that may not be found otherwise. Um, why has Crossref, why has Crossref been working on this field? Why have publishers said this is something that, that we need to support? So, one of the one of the issues is, I guess, one of one around licensing. So publishers all have their own rules um, governing what researchers may do with their content. Um, if you're pu publishing under, say, a Creative Commons license, that license assumes that um, a researcher looking at that license knows that it assumes that you would be able to to mine the to, to mine that information. It doesn't prohibit it in any way. Um, some publishers require researchers to sign like a supplementary agreement to be able to mine content that they already have access to, for example, through a subscription. And then some put technical limitations on it. So, for example, they might um, put rate limits on the, the amount of information um, someone running a text mining program can, can pull back at one time. In the, what I mean is that some text mining programs, um, what they will do is they will run across publisher websites and try to pull back the, the full text so that they can then run their, their, their programs on it. And what that can do, like some crawlers, is that it can affect the performance of the website. It can put too much load on it so that your normal researchers who just want to come, they want to read a few articles and download them, it could, it could affect performance for them. So some publishers try to try to restrict that so that they can control how well their site works for everyone. Um, and there are some there are some laws around this as well. Um, for example, the um, the European Commission is talking about having laws that just say if someone has access to your content, they have the right to be able to mine it. So there's quite a lot of discussions in, involving that. Um, and that's the licensing side isn't really what what Crossref is involved in, but publishers, more people are coming to publishers and saying, we want to mine this content, and publishers are saying, oh, okay, how can, how can we work with you in order to do that? Most publishers, if, if a researcher comes to them and says, hey, I'm interested in getting your you know, getting your full text content to be able to mine it. I think most publishers are, are keen to provide that because they want their, the information that they publish to be used as widely as possible. The issue being that the way that a researcher would, would identify what they're interested in mining is that they would use a discovery service. So maybe something like, um, something like Scopus or um, Google Scholar or, um, or PubMed to identify a list of the articles that they're actually interested in mining. The issue is that these, these articles can sit with lots of different publishers. You know, we have over 5,000 publisher members. What if you're interested in getting back full text articles to mine them from, you know, even, even 100 of those publishers? Are you, going to, are you going to contact each publisher individually? And then each publisher would have to respond to you to say, yes, you can do this. And then you would have to arrange how you would actually get the content. Will they send it to you on a disk? 
will they um, will they send it via FTP? Um, how how would you arrange that? So by the time there's so much work to be involved because of the scale of what they're trying to do, um, the actual sort of barriers to starting that are are quite high, and that's what we're trying to address using this service. So. Obviously, it comes back to, to metadata in that what we want to do or what we've started to do is to start to provide text miners with the information that they need in the, in the Crossref metadata. So what they need is they need the full text links to the publisher content, so um, to PDF, to XML, whatever the publisher can provide. They don't... They, they don't have a have a real preference. If you only have PDFs, they'll use PDFs, that's fine. And then we also need publishers to give us the um, the license agreement that says what the researcher can and can't do with the content. So it lets them know where the full text content is and it lets them know what they can do with it. And then we have um, an API which um, is difficult to demonstrate, but they have an API that they can use to look at that information across um, across all of the DOIs that they're interested in, and then they can use those full text links to pull back the pull back the text that they want and gather that information together to run their tools on it. So they're doing that centrally through Crossref. They're still getting the content from the publisher site so that publishers can track usage, but it means that they don't have to go and make all of those. Um, all of those individual agreements with, with the publishers. Um, it's open to any members, um, any Crossref members, and there isn't any charge, um, additional charge to, to participate. And there's no charge, the Crossref aren't charging researchers to use the API or to use the service. Um, in terms of participation, I said, um, Ginny said we've got about 73 million DOIs deposited. Um, we launched the service about a year ago, and we've got 15 million of those DOIs set up to use the service. So a researcher can come and potentially query um, and get the full text for those 15 million articles. And that's from over um, 200 different, different DOI prefixes. So it's growing and um, as more, more conversations have around the service, I think it will start to, to grow even more later this year. Um, if you are interested in more details, um, there's a page on our, um, on our website where you can get more, more technical details around the service. And there's also specific pages for researchers um, on a help site, which shows them exactly what queries they need to run, what commands they need to put in in order to get the full text. So that's a, that's a quick run through Crossref metadata services and text and data mining. Um, does anyone have any questions on those at the minute?